All right, so we're gonna get this microwave hung up in here and uh, have plenty of space east to west. And I should have more than enough space between the counter and here. You're supposed to have 30 inches from the bottom of your cabinet to your counter to hang this microwave. I got 33 inches, so I should be good. Now, the big thing is, is these cabinets are actually fairly deep. So what I gotta do is put a spacer back here to bring this mounting bracket out. And because these doors are gonna sit flush with the bottom of this cabinet, I've got a spacer I gotta put up here. One of these things. So we're gonna start getting these mounted up there. Get this microwave in. All right, so I've just temporarily installed these doors. Uh, the beauty about these doors is uh, you just pull this little latch, you can pop them right off the hinges. They're easy to take on and off. You don't have to undo the screws. Now the reason I've done that is I need to know how far out I need to have this microwave. We're installing one that's going to be doing what they call recirculating the air. Obviously no vent, this is an inside wall, so the microwave is going to suck up the fumes and spew them all over your kitchen, which is, you know, wonderful, but that's what we got. So I need to make sure that that vent clears these doors, so that's why I've installed those temporarily. All right, so I've got the template up there. I've done my absolute best to center it on this cabinet. I've also made sure that it's positioned properly so that those uh, recirculating vents will blow outside the door and you know not into your cabinet. So the next question is going to be is I'm going to have to add a spacer here because there's a mounting rail that goes on and I just need to figure out what that thickness is. Get that bottom rail mounted, drill these holes, put the microwave in. Should be that simple. Probably won't be but it should be. So for that spacer behind the microwave, I just took the old humble 2x4 and I gave it a dark stain and I've pre-drilled the holes in it. And I've also measured where everything's supposed to go. It should sit right on top of this tape line, which should make everything perfect, right? All right, so we're gonna hang up this bracket. And this is what the microwave clips into. And I've got some pen head screws, but I'm gonna put a little washer on them because these holes are a little bigger. I'm gonna put about six or eight of those in there just to hold it up. Now, again, if I measured everything correctly, I should just have to put this bottom of the two by four and I'm good to go. All right, so the microwave's in. It looks like I uh, cut off the top part of the movie there. Uh, you drill those holes in here, you feed in these self-guiding screws. Of course, by the time you're done messing around, the holes are pretty big, so I put some big washers in there. This thing should not be going anywhere. Plugged in, I got power. 
all is well. So the reason for staining that 2x4 black, now it blends in with the microwave much better. It obviously hangs a little bit below the cabinet, so looks good. All right, so we're just getting this dishwasher ready to go here, and as you can see, it needs a panel on the front. And you can make these look like a cabinet door or a set of drawers, whatever you want. We're gonna go with a cabinet door. So what I've done is this is a 24 by 30 inch door. And uh, you'll, you can see there the hinge is actually already cut into it. It's actually 23 and 7 eighths by 29 and 7 eighths, which is exactly what the front of the dishwasher requires. How convenient. And we've taped this template on there. Now, when I installed the microwave, the template I always find is, you know, not accurate, although that might be my measuring as well. This one is a little more straightforward. It's just literally tape it to the back of the panel, make it flush with the top because we want the top of that panel to be flush with the top of this dishwasher. And uh, that way it's not going to hit the counter when you open it. When you drill this, do not, I repeat, do not go all the way through. Put a piece of tape on your drill bit so you know how deep you've gone. You go through it, you gotta buy a new panel. Let the good times roll. Okay, so these, these first four screws, you can see they, they protrude and have a smooth thing. And what they do is they fit into these keyhole slots. And then there's screws on the inside that will we'll take them out and they'll actually come through this door into this panel. Now don't panic, the, the seal is inside where these screws are so your dishwasher won't leak. All right, moment of truth. Not super snug, but that's okay. It sits just a touch down from this top, which I think is okay. It does not interfere with the opening of the door, so I think we're in good shape. Feels pretty even. Good stuff. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this dishwasher and get it secured in there because I need to hold this door open and of course it'll be sort of tippy and that'll give me better access to this. So let's get the dishwasher in. Okay so I've installed the kitchen sink cabinet doors because I'm going to use those in order to line up where the panel on the dishwasher goes. Obviously I need to shove this in, but that'll uh, make this a lot easier. Okay, so I have the dishwasher in and hooked up. Now this panel is only just on by those keyhole things, so I actually have to attach it, but it's looking pretty good. I may have left just a touch big of a gap when I constructed it, but I'd rather have too much room than not enough. All right, I think we can attach that. Uh, we can attach that panel now. So in typical fashion, uh, get everything hooked up, everything's great, dishwasher doesn't leak, drain doesn't leak, old valve, which I never touched, the stem seal's gone, so it leaks. 
So now I got to replace that. So I'm going to have to try and cut it right here, right up against this valve, because there's not a lot of room to work with there. And I'm going to try one of these. It's a shark bite thing. It just slips on there and it's supposed to seal up. So just one more thing to do. All right, valve is installed, hooked up, water is on. Don't see any problems yet. I will check uh, several times over the course of the day. Plumbing is one of those things where it takes one drip every six minutes and if you only check every five, you've missed it. So we'll just let that do its thing and move on to other things. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the basic kitchen is done. Now I'm not 100% complete. I still got to put the door pulls on. I got to put the uh, toe kick around the base of these cabinets. I got to get the oven in and the fridge. And I think I'm going to have to cut a little panel to fill this hole here. But uh, she is coming together, looking good. All right, so I'm going to put some door handles on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to center the handle four and a half inches up from the bottom. It seems to look good. I've got this handy dandy little jig here. Put a piece of tape on there. Put your center line at four and a half. Line up your mark. Drill your holes. Install your handle. Just make sure it's on there flush. Should be easy. All right, so we're doing these toe kicks here. Now for these corners, what you want to do is you don't want to measure to the end of this leg. You want to measure to the end of this foot here, like this, this part up here. And then uh, your front one will clip on. Your side one will butt up against it here, and there's a little end piece you clip into this. So it's relatively straightforward. Now my cabinets sit a little higher than four and a half inches. I'm gonna rest these on the floor. You won't see the little gap up here. Now, you put these little clips in here and they just snap onto these legs. Now, rather than trying to slide them all the way in from the end, these are actually designed pretty well. You put them in roughly where you want them. You give them a turn and then you can kind of slide them to adjust them. So that's better than trying to slide them in from the very end. So we're gonna get this first one on here and we'll show you what it looks like. You can see they just they just snap into place which is great this little end piece overlaps so if you do have a little bit of a gap in here it does get covered 
Looks pretty good. Let's do the rest. The fun one's going to be where that vent is. I'm going to have to cut out a part for it, but that shouldn't be a huge issue. All right, we got all the kick plates in. Now I just got to put in the uh, remaining baseboards, and that'll be it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, baseboards are in, the toe kicks are in. This kitchen is complete. Still got to put in the fridge and the stove. Now hopefully I don't smash up the cabinets while I'm trying to do that. All right, folks, there she is. All done. Ready to be enjoyed. No plumbing leaks, no scratches, no scars yet. All good.